Active surveillance protocols uniformly incorporate what's called a confirmatory biopsy after the initial biopsy to confirm that the patient isn't harboring a higher grade cancer. So we do that, with, and most groups do that within the first year, some groups do it right away. There's a large uh, variability in the frequency of biopsies after that. As we gained more experience with surveillance and became more confident with it, we extended that biopsy interval. So now we do it approximately every three to five years. And in most patients, it's more like every four to five years. Uh, the Hopkins group has for many years done annual biopsies. I think that's uh, too many. And my understanding is they really mainly did it for the science to learn about the risk of progression over time. They don't really advocate that either. So probably the right interval is somewhere around three to five years, and then you can modify that depending on how much the patient looks like he's at risk. Um, the next question is MRI. Can it replace the biopsy or some of the biopsies? And I believe, yes, the MRI can replace the biopsy in some, but not all patients. So if you, if you have a relatively low risk patient with a negative MRI, I think it's reasonable to forego the biopsy and repeat that MRI somewhere around every two to three years. Uh, on the other hand, if the patient is at higher risk, let's say he's African American, has multiple positive cores, probably those patients should be rebiopsied anyway. The, the best data we have now is that with a negative MRI in men on surveillance, the risk of them still harboring cl clinically significant cancer is in the 5 to 10 percent range. So to identify those patients, I think there's still going to be a role for biopsy despite a negative MRI in the uh, higher risk low-risk patients.